Hello, my name is Dina Mavermatis. I am part of the community integration team, and today we are going to talk about the residential state supplement program. The community integration team consists of Megan Bonsella, myself, Garrett Carter, Ellie Jazzy, and Barb Johnson. The Residential State Supplement Program provides financial and Medicaid assistance to adults with disabilities who want to live in eligible living arrangements in the community, such as a Class II residential facility. The eligibility criteria for the Residential State Supplement is as follows. The non-financial criteria which is determined by Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services, is that an individual must be age 18 or older, eligible or already enrolled in Ohio Medicaid, currently receiving some type of Social Security income, meet a protective level of care, which is presumed if applying from a nursing facility, and residing in an eligible living arrangement. The financial criteria is determined by the County Department of Job and Family Services, which an individual can have a monthly income up to $1,800 a month and assets up to $2,000. So what's included in the allowable fee or rent? Accommodations, supervision, and personal care services. The Residential State Supplement Program did change as of July 1st, 2023. The annual program budget increased to $24 million. The allowable fee or rent increased to $1,600 per month. And the monthly income increased up to $1,800 per month. The RSS benefit amounts also increased on an individualized basis per income. You will see on this slide the charts that give the information on how to calculate the RSS benefit amount. The enrollment process is as follows. Mental Health and Addiction Services receives the application. We review non-financial eligibility criteria. And then we re make a referral for the level of care assessment if applicable. The Area Agency on Aging completes the level of care assessment, notifies mental health and addiction services of the level of care determination. We then send a referral to the County Department of Job and Family Services, who does the review for financial eligibility and authorizes the benefit. This is the slide showing the RSS application process. This is the two page application and the information that's required. Um, again, the completeness of the application is important. There's also a release of information in a enrollment for referral form, which need to be signed either by the individual or the legal guardian. If an individual does have a legal guardian, the application would also need to be returned with proof of guardianship. Some things to consider when applying for RSS. If an individual is discharging from a nursing home, they do not require a level of care assessment if the application is submitted and complete prior to discharge. An individual will not be considered eligible until the assessment has been completed and they meet a protective level of care. This impacts the RSS effective date if they move into the facility before meeting a protective level of care. What to include on the RSS application is important. A complete, correct, and legible application equals faster processing. Also, collaborate with all involved to ensure information on the application is correct and current. Be proactive. Confirm the individual's Medicaid status by reaching out to your local Job and Family Services office. Once the person is enrolled in RSS, 
Please report any status changes as soon as possible. If you have additional questions about RSS, you can send those questions to the general mailbox or contact me directly at 614-752-9316. And my name again is Dina Mavramatis. Thank you.